When you hear the name T-Pain, you probably think of I'm sprung, I'm in love with a stripper, bartender, or maybe can't believe it. Which, depending on when you were born, were all songs that had been played consistently while growing up. T-Pain is someone who has changed the music industry for either better or worse, that's for you to decide, but undeniably is a figure who dominated the music industry from 2005 to 2010. Eventually, he began to vanish off the music scene, became widely hated, fell into irrelevancy, and went into a four-year depression. But why? So who is T-Pain? Fahim, better known by his stage name, T-Pain was born September 30th, 1984 in Tallahassee, Florida. He got to start with music early on at the age of 10 by turning his bedroom into a studio due to his passion for making music. The name T-Pain would come as a reference to his hardships and struggles growing up in Tallahassee, Florida. Originally, T-Pain wanted to be a singer, but T-Pain said at the time that if you were singing, you would be considered soft, and so he continued rapping to impress his group, his friends, and people he respected the most. Eventually, he finally decided to say, I don't give a fuck, and went down the path of becoming a singer anyway. Originally at that time, T-Pain was only trying to make beats and was making rap songs for his group with the intention of just trying to impress him. He didn't care about making his music go out to the world. He just wanted it for his group and for his friends to hear. T-Pain's career in the music industry would begin after a cover he did of Akon's song, Locked Up. That's fucked up. Know what I'm talking After the release of the cover, the song started to be played on radios and it would only be a matter of time before Akon noticed it. At one point, T-Pain got asked if he ever thought about quitting music if he was ever going to give up. And T-Pain said, the most horrible time was the day that Akon called me. He called me right when I went to get my applications from McDonald's. I was giving up. I was literally in my dad's house renting my studio out, running it off a generator outside. People couldn't even record. The people who lived behind us was calling the police because of the noise ordinance because they heard the generator all day and all night. I was eating mayonnaise out the jar. It was bad. I used to sit in front of McDonald's and ask people for dollars to get me a cheeseburger it was bad and then that one day i went to go get that application i had been hanging out in front of there so much i knew the managers and all i had no problem getting a job or anything i went to go get the application and that's when akon called me following that call t-pain would go to be assigned with akon for only twenty thousand dollars due to his promise of mentorship and being able to give him a long career prior to the offer that akon gave him he was offered another deal from interscope which was for nine hundred thousand dollars but the problem he had with it was it wasn't going to lead him anywhere interscope was only interested in the one song he did with which was I'm Sprung. Interscope had no interest in furthering T-Pain's career while Akon did. His debut album, Rapper Turnt Sanga, would release December 6, 2005 with his breakout songs being I'm Sprung and I'm In Love with a Stripper. Following the success of his first album, he would go to start making a name for himself in the music industry with what people called at the time his robot stylized voice, which was his use of autotune. Autotune, not to get mixed up with vocoder, is an audio processor introduced in 1997 by Antares Audio Technologies. Essentially, it is a tool. It would measure and alter pitch in vocal and instrumental music recording and perform Originally, T-Pain started using autotune because he wanted to stand out amongst all the other singers currently out. T-Pain believed that without the autotune, he would just be another voice in the crowd and it would be that much harder for him to stand out. In the end, sticking with autotune worked out greatly for him. Now, while T-Pain wasn't the first person to use autotune, he was the first person to popularize it and carve the way and create the sound that we hear so much today in music played on the radio. With hit after hit, his career would continue to only skyrocket with collabs such as Low with Flo Rida, Good Life with Kanye West, Kiss Kiss with Chris Brown, and many other chart-topping songs. From 2008 to 2010, T-Pain continued to have great success. With his third studio album, Three Rings, receiving critical success, having collabs such as I'm on a Boat with The Lonely Island, a CMT collab with Taylor Swift titled Thug Story, All I Do Is Win with DJ Khaled, and a musical special on Adult Swim called Freaknik. It would appear T-Pain was on a never-ending path of success, but little did we know what was about to happen next. I was awakened by, um, by the flight attendant. She said, I also would like to talk to you in the back. So I got up and went back, and it was like, uh, you know, how's everything going? Quick, small talk, no big deal. And um, it was like, man, I want to tell you something, man. I was like, what's, what's, what's good? I thought he was about to tell me something real. He sounded real concerned. He was like, man, you kind of kind of fucked up music. So to understand how T-Pain got to his lowest point in his life, we need to know what really happened. Up to present day, there have been different reasons and speculations on why T-Pain got into depression and how he got into it. And eventually he even said himself it was because of Usher. But the thing is, it's a lot deeper than that. Let me explain. Essentially what happened with Usher was just a snowball effect. It was just one of the many things that were piling up that would push T-Pain further and further down. The real reason for T-Pain vanishing was due to his label stating that he needed to fall back. It started with them being like, you need to uh, fall back. You're doing too much. You need to stay out of the 
That was the worst part because they told me that and they really made me believe that I was doing too many features. I had too many songs on the radio. I was, I was doing too much work and I need to fall back. My nigga, a month after I fucking fell back, Jay-Z released DOA. When the track first dropped, it confused T-Pain as he misunderstood why his name was dropped in there and thought it was a song that was directed as a diss towards him. Eventually later on, things would get rectified between T-Pain and Jay-Z and T-Pain even releasing a remix of Drake's song Successful, speaking on the issue that happened with the song Death of Autotune. But unfortunately, by the time that song came out and things were rectified, the damage has already been done in the public's eye. It would seem so crazy and wild that T-Pain would just all of a sudden go dark right after Death of Autotune dropped because then to the public, all it does is confirm that the song worked and that Auto tune was actually going to die. At that time, the word autotune and T-Pain were synonymous with each other regardless of who else might have used it. Any hate that people might have had towards the program was all going to be directed towards T-Pain because he's the one that popularized it. But for him, he learned how to deal with the hate and wasn't phased by it. He learned to get over it. But there's one person in particular that he looked up to that was his idol and his name would be Usher. Usher was my friend. He was like, nah man, you really like, you really fucked up music for real singers. Literally at that point, I couldn't listen. Is he right? Did I, did I fuck this up? Did I fuck up music? That is the very moment. And I, I don't even think I, I realized this for a long time. That's the very moment that started like a four year depression for me. In 2010, T-Pain would come to release his fourth studio album, Revolver, which would come to only move 34,000 units. When you compare it to his third studio album, it was a major drop in sales numbers. Prior to the release of Revolver, he did drop two other singles called Take Your Shirt Off and Reverse Cowgirl. Unfortunately, both of those did not chart well and they were dubbed as promotional singles. Out of all the songs that were released on Revolver, the only song that would actually take off would be 5 O'Clock in the Morning with Wiz Khalifa and Lily Allen. After the poor release of Revolver, T-Pain's management began telling him that he should drop Autotune as it wasn't in anymore and he shouldn't use it i was having a meeting with my manager and i was like man I, I, I don't think we promoted the album well enough i don't think we uh i don't think we really took the initiative and made sure people knew that it was coming or we did, really didn't put anything before it we just did a photo shoot made the album cover blah 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 and he was like no i don't think that's it man and i'm like well i understand it's your job to do those things and make sure those things happen so i, I can understand how you feel attacked about this shit and i'm like that but you sound stupid that sounds stupid as fuck and he was like nah man i think uh i just think people don't like autotune anymore and i was like what <laughs> it was like yeah man i think people just don't like autotune anymore I, I, I think i think nobody bought your album because people just don't like autotune anymore and i'm like but there's other people that use autotune a lot that are selling crazy numbers and it was like yeah i just think i just think they don't like you using autotune anymore and maybe you should maybe you should take the autotune off and i'm like but the album is out already do i you know, do i put out another version I was like, I don't know, man. I just don't think people like Autotune anymore. In that time span of seven years, an album was supposed to drop somewhere between 2013 and 2015, which would be titled Stoicville The Phoenix. At that same time, T-Pain originally announced that he cut off his dreads. He stated that it was because the name of my album is Stoicville The Phoenix. To me, a phoenix represents new beginnings, a new era, a new life. I'm rising from the ashes. Unfortunately, it had numerous delays and eventually just fell off and was never mentioned ever again for a long time. At one point, T-Pain was also broke. In 2019, in an interview with The Breakfast Club, T-Pain revealed that he went broke after blowing roughly $40 million on expenditures and bad business choices. He said that's when he was really starting to run out of money. Now, while to the public, T-Pain said that cutting off his hair was the start of a new beginning, a new era, there was actually a real reason behind that. Me and you, babe, was supposed to release Stoicville, The Phoenix, in 2012. Remember when I fucking ripped my hair out in the hotel room in front of you when they told me that Stoicville the Phoenix wasn't coming out when the record label came into our room and said I got some bad news this album isn't coming out and then I ripped my hair out and then everybody was like and then I had to like play that that was a plan I ripped my hair out with my bare hands like I ripped my dreads out with my bare hands and then the label came out the next fucking month like oh yeah that was a, that was a thing he was already planning on doing that and I was like no bitch they did this to me since Stoicville would never come out due to label disagreements, T-Pain would later come to make Oblivion, which would be his fifth studio album, and the one album that T-Pain didn't actually enjoy making and could barely remember recording. After the release of his fifth studio album, Oblivion, that would be when things would start to go on the up and up for T-Pain. It was his last required album on the record label, which allowed him to go fully independent after. He also started getting a streaming on Twitch, 
It allowed him to make his presence known to the world for who T-Pain really is, and not be told what he had to say or do in the public side like he had to for the past decade. As someone who's been a long T-Pain fan, I am glad that I was able to finally get this video done and release it to the world. I know I didn't cover some things, I was trying to keep this video length not too long, but to the point where I can still cover everything without going to like 20 minutes, 30 minutes, because I don't even know how long this is going to be. Either way, I hope you enjoyed this video, I'm glad that I was able to share more information out there. Hopefully more people can now understand the story and the things that T-Pain had to go through to get to where he is now and you know he's honestly a great guy i even got him to listen to one of my songs which you can hear after this it's crazy how i even got him to hear my music but it was an enjoyable experience anyways that's all i got for you have a great day <laughs> and yeah